everyone, welcome to Mac One Design EMC channel. Previously, we discussed using TEMCELL and performing a near field scanning and then predict the far field radiating emission of a PCB. And we said uh, actually there are a few methods. So, in today's session, we're going to explore another method, which is what I call a mini antenna setup. Okay, so in this video, we are going to use a small Iconic antenna such as this and an active monopole antenna but we are not extending the antenna to one meter but rather use a very small monopole uh, active antenna which we already put in in the tent and let's go through the setup details okay so this is inside the tent let's go through the uh, test setup as you can see this is a active monopole antenna right and we can switch on we can put gains but normally the active monopole antenna will extend to one meter and uh, slightly over one meter long, which ov obviously we cannot uh, um, extend to one meter long in this small tent. So what we had is about 30 centimeter tall active antenna. And uh, the setup is the same. We have a ground plane and on the ground plane, there are two lizards with 50 ohm terminations. So we have 10 centimeter uh, insulation layout. If I remove it, you can see um, there's a ground plane which extends about one meter long, okay? About one meter long. So the PCB, the EUT, again, is the same EUT we use, we put in there. And here, you can see the details of how we bond the ground plane and the counterpoint of the active monopole antenna. I want to stress the fact that you need to bond this plane and this plane very very well meaning the electrical connection between the two planes is very important as you can see here not only do we have screws and screws we also use copper uh, tape to make sure really really good conductivity between the ground reference of the active monopole and the listen uh, chassis bonding point that's very, very important, okay? After you set up this miniature active monopole setup, which is effectively perhaps one third or one a half of what they actually had in the uh, compliance automotive setup, we'll test the performance of um, the DUT, okay? And we put the uh, insulation support back in again. Okay, let's go to the software fire load projects. In this case, we are going to test radiated emission and let's test again uh, CISPA 25 class 5 uh, limit. Once the project is loaded, we can see it starts from 150 kilohertz all the way up to 2.5 gigahertz because the active monopole antenna works only from 150 kilohertz up to about 30 megahertz. So in this case, we only need to scan from 150 kilohertz up to here. As you can see here, that's segment 12. So rather than uh, segment all, I'm just untick this one and I'll select one, two, three, four, all the way down to 12. So the software will basically only start scanning between 150 kilohertz to 30 megahertz. Here, there's really nothing to change. The antenna factor is important, but because the active monopole antenna we are using in this case has a very flat antenna factor and it's close to zero, therefore there's no need to, uh, uh, to put any antenna factor in this case, okay? So once the setup is set, let's click start to do the scanning. Let's have a comparison between our tent results with the accredited test house results. On top again is the test house results. On bottom is our tent miniature antenna result. As you can see, the overall profile generally look very, very similar. The first order harmonics, we had about 5 dB difference between the two results, which is not too bad. From the second order harmonics, the profile uh, shows very very similar trend. Uh, it's descending in when the uh, frequency increases and the big difference here as you can see again is we have a resonance peak 
sitting perhaps on uh, on the 15 megahertz point, whereas their peak is about 30 megahertz range. This is again due to the fact that we are using a relatively shorter uh, wiring cable, and we have to lay out the cable in a winding, snaky shape, whereas they just use a straight cable in their setup. So we know that will cause resonance peak shifting down downwards to lower frequency range, which makes sense in this case. Uh, so the active monopole antenna effectively works from 150 kilohertz up to about 40 megahertz. Therefore, in this lower frequency radiated emission test, I think we can confidently trust uh, the test result using our very small mini antenna setup that will give us good confidence if in the setup we pass the CISPR 25 limit. Here's one more important thing to uh, emphasize again. We mentioned before that the bonding of the counterpoint of the active monopole to the ground plane is extremely important as we need to make really, really good electric connections between the two plates. And here we just want to demonstrate why it is important. As you can see here, we have two results. The green trace is the trace we, we got for the final result. However, I also wanted to show you the blue trace, right, showing here. Notice the difference is that the, blue, the green trace, actually, we had, um, we had this peak, whereas the uh, blue trace, as you can see, is just uh, the amplitude of the, hum uh, the spectrum just slowly uh, went down. And the reason for that is this is the result that we didn't use uh, a really good uh, bonding just to give you the comparison result. As you can see, when, when you have really good bonding between the counterpole uh, and the ground plane, you actually collect more common mode noise, hence showing here. Whereas if you had bad connection, in, as, if it, as shown in this case, you won't collect enough common mode current, therefore the results are not valid. Okay.